Are you not sure if a pair of jacks is actually a good hand or understand why ace king isn't as good as everyone thinks it is? Sit back, cowpoke, cause today we're gonna be talking about starting hands in Texas Hold'em. Hey Internet, it's your old friend Dominic here with AmericanCasinoGuide.com. If you appreciate everything we do and you wanna show some support and love to the channel, hit that subscribe button and wallop that big like button while you're at it. Now, one of the most fundamental skills you need to have in Texas Hold'em is knowing when to play a hand based on its potential strength. Thinking like six steps ahead. You are not gonna be getting pocket pairs every time cards are dealt. When playing a game of Texas Hold'em, you need to be ready to make a decision pre-flop. Understanding your two whole cards and what they can say about your chances of winning overall will help you make the right decision at the right time. The playable range you allow yourself is a personal decision and one you really should adjust based on factors like table position, chip stack, and of course your own personal playing style. And I do mean aggressive, that's your style, professor. I've talked about this in previous episodes, but it's worth noting that tight play is typically the advice you get from top level tournament players who, like I said, play a very limited range of hands. Simply put, you cannot play every hand, and even good players are gonna fold perceivably good cards. Fold, fold, fold. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about high-ranking cards, you know, preferably ones that are connected and or suited. Now, these kinds of hands are great for raising late position, because they have real potential to hit on the flop and work themselves into a strong hand. However, they can be broken pretty easily by a bad flop. Essentially, they are drawing hands and still need a lot of help to win at the showdown. Although Ace-King is tier one, it is nothing but a high card until paired with an Ace or a King, as it can be beaten by anyone with a pair of twos. In that same vein, an Ace by itself does not make a good hand. Without a strong kicker, an Ace is just a high card and is ultimately a drawing hand. My recommendation, stick to pocket pairs and connectors that rank between eight and ace. With starting hands like these, you can comfortably raise pre-flop regardless of position or number of callers. This style of play is commonly referred to as tight aggressive and is the default mode that I and a lot of professional poker players use unless circumstances like chip stack or table position dictate a change in tactics. Very aggressive. Do you want to start putting your skills to the test and playing Texas Hold'em online? Then check out our website, americancasinoguide.com. The link is down below. Now, when it comes to whole cards, it doesn't get much better than pocket pairs. But unsurprisingly, we don't play premium pairs the same way we play the middle or bottom pairs. Now, premium pairs have the highest probability of paying out, and generally speaking, should be raised pre-flop regardless of position. My advice, avoid slow play unless you have monstrous whole cards like pocket aces. Now, pocket queens or kings can be good as well, but still can be bested by anyone who pairs up an ace, so be careful. Think about it. For a similar reason, pocket jacks that can be beaten by a paired ace, paired king, or paired queen should only be raised pre-flop when you don't have callers out front. Now, when it comes to middle or bottom pairs, the power really is in pulling a surprise set post-flop and then pushing in heavy with three of a kind or a strong two pair in mid position or later. Remember, when raising pre-flop with a bottom pair, even in late position with no callers out front, it's essentially a bluff, as what you're really looking for is to push out the other players and avoid a call altogether. Hey. Despite potentially winning the hand and of course the blind money, this is not a money making tactic. And when holding mid to bottom pairs, it's best you avoid raising pre-flop and instead wait to see what shapes up. Wait for it. So guys, did you ever lose with two aces? Let us know in the comments section down below. And while you're at it, leave us a like and ring a ding ding that notification bell. My name's Dominic, wishing you luck and reminding you as always, play responsibly.